Hi, I'm Jace Magari Fuji. And I'm Morgan McVeigh. And, and you, you are, are watching, watching CLU, CLU Live. Live. It was almost a century ago that the Turkish government set forth a plan to eradicate millions of innocent Armenians in the Ottoman Empire, known as the Armenian Genocide. Natalie Kalimdarian has more on the story. The Libyan currently lives in Mission Hills Nursing Home, Adadat Homes. Salibian says her and her family were saved from the genocide as her father was friends with the mayor of the town they lived in in Antap, Turkey. Salibian attended the USC show 20th Anniversary Gala with Kim Kardashian back in 2014. Kardashian, who is of Armenian descent, recently took a trip to Armenia with husband Kanye West and sister Khloe Kardashian. The family visited genocide monuments and learned more about their heritage. West also performed a free concert in Armenia's Swan Lake. Another advancement to get recognition was Pope Francis celebrating Sunday Mass for the 100th anniversary of the Armenian Genocide. The Pope publicly referred to the events that happened in 1915 as a genocide. Oh Thank you, Natalie. It's certainly unfortunate that this horrific event took place. The grass might not be greener on the other side in California. California is continuing on its four-year drought streak, which is worrying a lot of residents. Residents are being encouraged to conserve water and be mindful of their water uses. Let's hand it over to Ryan, who has more information on the topic. We're in an historic drought, and that demands unprecedented action. It's for that reason that I'm issuing an executive order mandating substantial water reduction across our state. As Californians, we have to pull together and save water in every way we can. Brown's new act allows cities to install water meters to monitor businesses' consumption of water and to find those who are using water in irresponsible ways. This water reduction mandate will affect golf courses, parks, lawns, campuses, and universities. In some of the agricultural areas, farmers are losing land and money as they dig deep below the surface to pump groundwater, depleting the water table and causing the earth to literally sink from beneath them.
Thanks, Ryan. You're great. It's funny how things we take for granted can be gone so quickly. I know. Guess I'm going to have to start taking shorter showers. <laughs> This Saturday, CLU will be hosting a 5K run to raise money for the Saving Innocence Organization, one of many organizations dedicated to ending sex trafficking. Heather Power Gomez got the chance to talk to the organizer of the event and has more on the story. When the issue of sex slavery comes up, many people think of faraway countries. What many do not know is that it is a prevalent issue right here at home. Saving Innocence is a nonprofit organization based in Los Angeles that aims to rescue child victims and end sexual exploitation of children. Sophomore Annika Stenfjord is an intern for the group. I started working for Saving Innocence because Kim came and spoke, the founder and executive director came and spoke at my church, um, and I just felt like there was a really big need, and people don't know that this problem is right here at home, and I it really struck me um, and spoke to my heart so I felt like I had to get involved nice. and she has organized a 5k here on campus in order to raise awareness on this prevalent issue I struggled for a while deciding um, what kind of event I wanted to do to raise awareness um, and then I kind of decided a 5k was a really good way to do it because um, it can be both an awareness event and a fundraiser um, kind of combined um, and appeal to both like athletes as well as people that want to already be involved in the cause. Um, so to try and kind of pull from a huge group of people that might not know what this problem is and then um, raise awareness that way. Sophomore Lauren Parker is a participant in this event. Well, my friend Annika is in charge of it and I'd like to support her and it's for a great cause. So I figured why not? The 5K will be held on campus Saturday, April 18th, and all the proceeds will go to help the quest to end child sex trafficking. I'm Heather Power Gomez, and I'm walking, or running, back to you in the studio. Thank you, Heather. It's so encouraging to see organizations like Saving Innocence step up to fight against this terrible ordeal going on, not only in America, but around the world. Mm -hmm. This is an awesome cause, and I'm so glad CLU is hosting this. I'll definitely be there. Metro General is a four-episode soap opera spoof series currently in the progress of being shot right now at CLU. The show is about a dysfunctional hospital trying to find a solution and reason for the cholera epidemic they are facing, all while dealing with the dramas within their inner circle. It's premiering in the forum April 30th through May 3rd. Let's go to Ashley who has more details on the show. Danish. I love Danes. I have Germans too. Sometimes I like to spice things up with a nice Mediterranean woman. Or man. Or anything with legs, really. Or without. Thank you. 
and how it's going to be for the next few years. I'm very excited about 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 the next few years. Thanks, Ashley. I'm so lucky to be a part of this project and can speak for the whole cast when I say we are so excited to present our final work to the CLU community and hope everyone enjoys it. Yeah, we can really tell that you and the rest of the cast have put in a lot of work yeah. to this show. Can't wait for its premiere. The Kalu softball team, another group hard at work, currently stands third in the Sky Act Conference, putting them in contention for the postseason tournament. With a tight race to stay in the top four teams, the Regals helped out their cause on Friday afternoon. Kevin Schultz has a story. Hi, I'm Kevin Schultz, standing here outside Hutton Field, where the Cal Lutheran softball team faced off against the Pomona Pitzer Sage Hens. After a lengthy three-week break in between games, the Cal Lutheran softball team returned to Hutton Field on Friday afternoon, where they defeated Pomona Pitzer 4-1 in Game 1 and 7-4 in Game 2 to complete the sweep. Courtney Soy improved to 10-9 in the circle after pitching seven strong innings, allowing just one earned run on four hits while striking out two. The softball team's next home game will be played Friday the 24th, where they'll be facing off against the Whittier Poets. Until then, this is Kevin Schultz. Back to you in the studio. Thank you, Kevin. It's been about five years since the Regals have made it to the postseason tournament, so this would be a huge accomplishment for mm -hmm. this team. Definitely. Division Three Week is an organization on campus headed by football player Jack McFarlane that fo focuses on helping sick children. Members of Division Three accept donations, encourage people to get tested for Be The Match, and offer cards for CLU students to sign that are sent to children's hospitals. Nick has more details on this touching event. This week was Cal Lutheran's annual D3 Week, a week dedicated to Division Three athletes and all of their hard work balancing school and athletics. I sat down with Jack McFarland, organizer of many of this week's events. Hi, I'm Nick Privatelli here with Jack McFarland, Vice President of the Student Athlete Advisory Committee. So Jack, why are we out here today? We are out here for Division, Division Three Week. It's a special showcase the NCAA puts on just for Division Three athletes um, that shows off the amazing achievements our athletes have performed all year long. Excellent. So what have the students been doing to help with your cause? Well, D3 Week has three pillars to it, and we are emphasizing two of them, which is community involvement and student leadership and achievement. So by using community involvement this Saturday, or this Saturday, I think it's the 10th, 11th, we are having uh, Be The Match, which is a charitable organization, um, come out and uh, sign people up for a BOEM registry program. And by doing that, we are also showing leadership, as many of these students have volunteered to be here and to help out with Division Three Week. And uh, how successful was this program for you guys? It was extremely successful, actually. Um, we, I myself, um, organized it, so I wasn't expecting the huge turnout, but we had over 600 cards signed. Wow. Uh, 51 people signed up for the Bow Mare Registry, and a lot of people have taken giveaways and have just run wild with it. It's, it's a lot of fun. That's fantastic, Jack. Is there anything else you'd like to add before we go? Nope. Uh, we had a lot of success, and uh, go Kingsman and Regals. I'm Nick Privatelli, back to you in the studio. Thanks Nick, it's so great to see CLU students working to make a difference in the lives of children, especially ones who are unfortunately confined in the walls of a hospital most of the time. It certainly is Morgan, it's always encouraging to see people rise up to help children in need. The annual CLU Fest is set to take place on Saturday, giving students a chance to showcase their best work in photography, animation, graphic design and other fields of multimedia. Kaylee Gunning took an inside look at the exhibit. Clue Fest 2015 will showcase students' best multimedia and film creations and explores groundbreaking technology such as 3D and motion graphics. Students and the community will get a chance to look at all projects created by CLU students.
Last Saturday, April 11th, CLU welcomed prospective students who have been accepted. It was an exciting day for these students who were given tours and insight as to what it would be like if they went to CLU. Now to Frank with more information on the day. Thank you guys in the studio. I'm Frank Rodriguez and I'm here at California Lutheran University here for Admitted Students Day. We're here at Admitted Students Day. We're just going to see what's going on, interview a couple of students and see what Admitted Students Day really is all about. I'm Elise Brady and I'm a junior here. Um, I'm volunteering to help just kind of guide people around, answer questions that people may have. Um, it's just exciting seeing how excited like some people are and some people might not be excited but by the end of the day you can tell you know people are really being able to make their decisions of where they want to go. So among the various students that helped volunteer for Admitted Students Day, several professors stayed behind and gave guided tours to the prospective students who are going to attend Cal Luthan. All right, thank you guys. I hope you enjoyed this piece and back to you in the studio. Thank you, Frank. Can't wait to see which students decide to come next year. Thank you for joining us today on CLU Live. Tune in next time to hear more on current events. Until then, I'm Jace. And I'm Morgan. See you next time. Mm -hmm.